Okay, let's get started setting up Open Web UI on our computers, which is what you see up on the screen right now. There are a couple prerequisites that I do expect you to have already taken care of. One is make sure you already have Olama set up. We will not be going over that setup. If you don't know how to do that, check out the description below. There are two videos, one for Mac and one for Windows for getting Olama set up on your computer. And the next prerequisite is having Docker set up. So we'll cover that in this video. Jump over to the Docker website. Okay, I'm back and I've got the Docker website pulled up here. Now we're gonna need to download Docker if you don't already have it installed. If you already have it installed, go ahead and skip forward the chapters or below in the description. All right, so if you don't have Docker installed, we're gonna go up here to the top and we're gonna go up to products and then we're gonna go to Docker desktop. Now it's going to detect the OS that you're currently running. I'm running a Mac and it's running the Apple chip. Now, if you're running Windows, you will obviously select the Windows installer. And if you're on Linux, you will select the Linux installer. So I've select Mac here. And next I am going to go to my downloads folder where I have that install and run the installer. So I'll be back once this is done downloading. Okay, I'm back and I'm in my downloads folder and you can see I have Docker downloaded here. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna just double click on this here and I am going to drag this to my application folder. Now, if you're on Windows, just go ahead and walk through the installer. It's pretty straightforward and run through that and come back after you're done installing that. All right, so I'm gonna jump over to my applications folder and get Docker up and running on my computer. Okay, I'm back and I'm in my applications folder and I have Docker selected here. I am going to double click on this and what it's going to do, it's going to start the Docker engine on the back end for me. And then this pops up here. So we haven't pulled down any Docker images yet. So that's what we'll do next. And if you're on a Windows computer, you should be able to go down to your taskbar and see that Docker is running in your taskbar once you go find the Docker program. So now that we've taken care of prerequisites, we have Olama running on our computer and we have Docker installed. Now let's jump over to the open UI website so that we can get this installed onto our computer via Docker. Okay, I've got the open web UI website pulled up here and this is what you will be greeted with. It may be different by the time you watch this video. So what we're gonna do next is go up to the very top here and click on docs. And we are going to go to the get started section. And we're gonna scroll down here. Feel free to reference the link in the description or the open UI website, but we're gonna go roll down here and we're going to find the Docker command that we need to run here. And the command that we're going to run is the first command here because we already have Olama installed locally on our laptop. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command here. And next I am going to open up terminal. But before we jump over into the terminal, I do wanna let you know, this is by no means meant to be a deep dive into how Docker operates and runs. It's just meant to give you enough knowledge on how to get Docker up and running so you can get open web UI running within a Docker container. All right, let's jump over into the terminal. Okay, I've got terminal pulled up here. If you're on a Windows, it'll be your command line and go ahead and open that up. And I am gonna now paste the command that I copied from the open web UI documentation here, and I am going to hit enter. Now, what you'll notice, it didn't find the image locally on my computer. So it's pulling that image down onto my computer and installing that for me in Docker. So I'll come back after this is done. Okay, I'm back and my open web UI image has been pulled down into Docker. So you should see a screen similar to this. Now we're gonna open up the Docker application and just briefly go over what has been set up for us. So I'll see you back in the Docker application. Okay, I'm back and I have my Docker desktop application opened up here on my computer. And for those who are not familiar with how to open that up, if you're on a Mac, you're gonna go up to the top here and you're going to click go to dashboard and it'll open it up for you. And if you're on the Windows, go to where you have your programs installed and click on Docker Desktop and that should open up for you. So the first thing that you can see here is, you can see I have a container that was created with that last command that we ran in terminal. And this is where our actual open web UI application exists. So we'll be able to click this and open that up. But before we do that, let's jump over to the images section here and the image represents the copy of the application that is stored in our Docker desktop. So we can create multiple containers based on this image. So that's what our container is based on. And next we have the volume section here. Now this is where our persistent disk exists and this is attached to our container. So if we were to go up to the top here 
and delete this container, that volume would persist. So just think of it as a persistent disk on your computer that stores data for you. So I wanted to go over that briefly with you before we dove into the open web UI application itself. So let's go back up to containers here. And now let's click on the section where you see 3000 colon 8080. And we're going to click on that. And it's going to open up localhost 3000 for us. Okay, we can see that the browser has opened up a sign in page for us, but we need to create an actual account. Now I'm going to click sign up down there and we have this screen appear. So go ahead and walk through these steps here and then come back and go ahead and log into your open web UI account. Now, one thing to call out, these credentials are stored locally within your container. So this is not sent back over to open web UI. This is stored locally within this container. Okay, so after you've created your open web UI account and you have logged into your open web console here, you'll be presented with this interface here. And you're probably already familiar with this if you've used ChatGPT. It's essentially a clone with some extra features built in here. Now I'm only gonna do a high level overview of the most necessary features that you need to know about in order to get the most value as you initially start using the open web UI application. Now you can see up at the top here that we have the option to select a model here. Now I've only downloaded the Llama 3 Instruct model. Now the models you see here up at the top drop down here are the actual models that we've pulled into our Olama instance on our computer. So if you're not familiar with Olama, again, go ahead and check out the two videos down below for Windows and Mac on how to set up Olama on your computer. All right, so what I'm going to do is select the Llama 3 model here. And I am going to say, write me some sample Python code. I always just like to use this as an example here to see what kind of output we get. So we can see it's printing us some sample Python code here. Next, we can see that we have features over here, just the same as ChatGPT. We can go over here and share this. We can rename this. We can delete this chat. And we can also archive this chat here. So I'm going to go ahead and archive this. And we can look at that in the settings later on. So I am going to go up to the top. You still have the ability to create new chats. So just like chat GPT, we can select new chat here or new chat here. And when you create a new chat, you'll obviously have to select a model from the drop down, but that's not an option, obviously within chat GPT. If you hang around to the end of the video, I'll show you how to pull new models directly within the open web UI interface. Okay, we've covered the basics, nothing here really new to see if you're familiar with using ChatGPT. So I'm going to go over some other features that I think it may be important for you to know as you initially start using the open web UI. I'm going to go here where my name is and select that. And then we have the admin panel. Now I'm going to click the admin panel here and you can see it has the users I have signed up here. So I've just have one user, but you can create multiple users to access this instance of open web UI. So nothing really special here going on. Of course, you can delete a user and edit a user. All right. And if you have any questions about anything, maybe you want to see something in a little more detail. Again, this is just going to be a basic overview of open web UI. Just put a comment down below and maybe create another video on that. All right. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click playground. So similar to the playground on the open AI's website, I can add a system prompt here and I can just test the chats out here. So I'm going to select the Llama 3 model here and I'm just going to say, what is your name? And click submit here. And of course he says, I'm just not AI. I don't have a personal name. So that's how you use the playground. Nothing really fancy there going on. Now, if we go back here and we go to archive chats, we can click there and we can see that chat that I archived earlier when we initially started using the open web UI interface here. And of course we can share this, can actually unarchive this chat here and we can delete this archive chat here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click delete and I no longer have archive chats. It's basically the same feature that's in chat GPT. All right, I'm gonna go back over here and I am next going to go to the settings section. Now I'm not going to dive super deep in the settings section. I'm only going to dive into the areas I think you really need to know right out of the gate. And again, I can make a more advanced video on open web UI 
at a later date, depending on the comments that I get. So in the general section, we can set our theme. Do we want it dark? Do we want it system? My system set to dark, so it's showing up as dark, and I can change my language here also. We can set a custom system prompt here for our underlying models. I'm just going to leave that blank for now. So that really covers the general section. And now I'm only going to cover two more sections here. I'm going to cover the connection section here, just in case you have a different configuration or you want to change your configuration for your underlying Olama instance. Now here, this is pointing to my base Olama URL. Now this here, this URL here is a Docker specific URL. And it's just saying point back to the host. So whatever host is hosting this Docker instance, point back to it at this particular port here. So essentially this here is equal to this here. Now, if I copy that and I open up a new tab and I paste it, you can just see it says Olama is up and running. Now I won't go too deep into this here, but this is again, specific to Docker because if it had local host here, it would be the container pointing back to itself. And the container itself doesn't have Olama hosted on it. We're looking at our local instance of Olama. So I'm on a Mac. If I go up here to the top, we can see Olama's running here directly on my computer here. So hopefully you understand why that's there. If you wanted to, say you wanted to host Olama on a completely separate computer within your lab setup or something like that, and you had the IP, you could change this here to point to an IP of a separate computer where Olama is running at. So hopefully you understand that. Feel free to comment below if I wasn't super clear on that. All right, so in the, the last section that I am going to cover in the settings is the models. And again, like I said, if you hung around to this point in the video, this is where we can actually go and pull different Olama models directly from Olama.com right here. So for example, say I want Phi 3 and I want to pull that down. I know the name of that model there, so I can enter it in here and it will download that model for me. I also can delete a model here. So I am going to go ahead and click download here and show you this downloading directly within the open web UI without me having to open up Olama on the terminal. So I'm going to click download here and then you'll eventually see progress bar start to tick here. So we can see that it's now gathering this model, downloading it onto my computer. This is a fairly small model here. So the 5.3, I believe it's three gigs and some change for the size of that model, at least for the, the disk space that it takes up on your computer. And so for the time that I'm been sitting here, it downloaded pretty quickly. Depending on your internet connection, it may take a little bit longer. So we'll let this finish downloading here. I will actually go ahead next. Well, it's done already now. So we can see it's successfully been downloaded now. So I am going to click X here on this settings tab. And again, I'm not going to go into these are not the most important settings to get up and running. Again, I may make a separate video on these other settings. But if you understand the general, the connections and the model section, it's good enough to get up and running. So we're going to exit out of this here. And Let's go back and create a new chat here now. So I'm going to click new chat here. I'm going to scroll up to the top here where it says select model. And we can now see we have our new model here downloaded onto our computer without actually having to go into the terminal or the command line and run the Olama pull command. So I'm going to select that and tell it to write me a short story and see what kind of output we get. So it's just writing us a, a short story here within the output. Now we didn't cover everything that was available to us in the open web UI, such as model files and prompts and documents. Again, if you would like to see a separate video on those things, feel free to comment down below and let me know. And then I will create a separate video dedicated to those sections here. But I think we've learned enough here on how to get open web UI up and running. And if you'd like to create your very own personalized Olama models, feel free to check out the video up on the screen where I walk through that in a step-by-step -step manner. And if you like the content, hit like and subscribe. I do videos like this on a weekly basis. Thanks for hanging out to the end of this video and see you in the next one.